the video on you. Looks like I may have to change some settings here. Oh, no, no, there we are. All right, we're up, but we're running super slow-mo, uh, so I am going to need to uh, lower my uh, transmission settings. And hopefully that'll work a little bit better. All right. So, uh, yeah, Jared, Jared and I are here tonight. Uh, hopefully the um, the video will come through. I'm having a little bit of connectivity issues on my end because country uh, uh, internet sucks. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we thought we'd do a quick uh, update on the Great Bassoon. Um, actually, I don't know how much you currently have printed, Jerry. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I actually haven't printed, I actually haven't printed as much as you on any kind of project. I'm working on other projects. So right now, uh, so right now what I have, what I have is, um, about two thirds, of about two thirds of the, uh, the boot joint printed. Of course, everything up from there, but I also, I, I kind of made this, um, this really rough part of the IT kind of sexy idea of the parts of it held all together with tape. Um, but uh, but uh, it does actually, actually I'm surprised, surprised it actually sounds pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. How bad is it? Yeah. So, um, so I will. S th there's not going to be a lot we can do about the echo on that, guys. Uh, it's, it happens to be just the room Jared's in right now. Um, but so uh, I'll kind of show what I've got on my end. Mine's not going to be playable because um, mine is, is currently designed for. Um, uh, a a narrower tape, uh, taper vocal. Uh, okay. What what's going on? Oh, Jared, you are gonna have to go to headphones. Sounds like. Okay, headphones. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let me try. Uh, Let me try uh, this real quick. Okay. Uh, can you hear me still? I can hear you. Yeah, I can. I'm going to see if the chat room still can. Um, what I did is I uh, silenced uh, the audio coming in on my end. Um, and that should help, too. Um, so, okay. Uh, can you still hear Jared, guys? Um, Jared, you want to say something? I, we're having a, a... Well, see, that's better. Yeah. So, all right. 
So I, I'm not hearing, seeing anything from the chat room right now. So I'm going to assume that they can hear you. Yeah, I don't see anything in there. So yeah. yeah, but I, I mean, it, we've got nearly a minute delay. Sa sounds like. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, they can hear me. All right, okay, they, can, they can hear you. All right. Uh, I, then you, I, I have a longer delay. Okay, we're good then. All right, cool. All right, so um, while Jared has uh, two thirds of the boot joint, or I guess you probably have about half of the boot joint, I would think, or all, nearly all of it. Uh, because yeah, I have down to two pieces. Oh no, you you split yours into yeah, three. Yeah, because I have a because I have a smaller printer. I have to divide it into three. Okay. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, Jared's printer's a little smaller than mine, so my, my boot, uh, joint's printed in one piece, two pieces, and he split his into three. But I've also got the, uh, the base joint done. Now, the base joint, uh, is where, uh, and, you know, Jared and I have talked about this a little bit, but there's going to be some ergonomic issues that I think we're going to have to change. So, um... The, the first thing is it, it gets um, really chunky. Um, the, for my hands, it's fine here, um, but if I get anybody with smaller hands than mine, uh, it's going to be really difficult to, to reach all the keys. So um, one thing that, so this is gonna be kind of a key work design. So first finger is we want to stay open and then um, let me see. I've got a pencil here. So instead of having the keyword go straight up and down, I, the, it's really going to need to go at about a 45 degree angle off of there in order for a standard size human to play it, which means, um, uh, this is, uh, one thing where, where Jared and I, uh, kind of differ on uh, our style he wants a op you want an open tone hole on second finger and i'm arguing that it probably should be closed yeah um as of right now i'm actually starting to agree with you more that it should be closed uh, my hope was that i could play the, uh, the e flat with the one and three fingering but unfortunately it doesn't seem to work very well okay. it actually jumps up a semitone which is it doesn't make any sense that's uh, that is bizarre. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, going with your, uh, uh, what you said about the key work. Uh, so I just had this one really simple, like teardrop shaped key. I was kind of trying to make it look kind of like the key work you would see in a contra bassoon, but it was just a rough piece of the bass clarinet key. And what I actually found is it's actually, because um, I thought the key would be more comfortable if it was straight out, but I find just having to lift my finger that high is actually kind of uncomfortable. And I think once the, uh, once the, the bass joint's there, it's going to be even worse. So what I'm kind of thinking, uh, for the first tone hole, I want to kind of have like a tone hole chimney come off to the up and to the left, um, sort of like the have like the same function that the wing, the the, yeah. the bulge of the wing joint serves, uh, but just for that single tone hole, right. and then have the keys lower than the tone hole itself, so it's more comfortable to play. And I, I tend to agree with you there. I think that we are going to have to build a chimney out. And I'm thinking another 10 millimeters out should be fine. Uh, that will mean that we'll have to recalculate the um, the the tone hole placement. It's going to need to go a little bit lower, but actually lower. Uh, no, it'll need to go a little higher, won't it? Yeah, higher. So about 10 millimeters higher. Um, uh, but so one of the other things is as it stands right now, as, as we've designed it, it's going to need to sit about here. Uh, now the, the problem with, uh, this in playing position is the boot is up for where I am in this chair. It's about a foot and a half off the ground, which means that the bell is going to be scraping the ceiling. And this is what I, I was trying to talk, say in, in words that didn't make much sense uh, in the in chat today. Um, what I want to do is I want to just lower everything down, and it, it it gets the hands at a much better position. But that means that the the design of the upper 
uh, wing joint may need to be tweaked some so that the the vocal would come out here instead of down here. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and, and just um, figuring that we have to move the uh, the first tone hole up, uh, both because we're adding the chimney and, and because it needs to be moved up anyway, just because of the intonation. I think making the uh, the lower wing the lower wing joint uh, longer by at least a few inches, and then uh, making the uh, the upper boot right. or wing joint, whatever you want to call it, shorter makes sense. Right. Although I'm noticing, um, I think uh, the reason it would have to sit so high up, uh, and I've noticed this before, uh, because of the I'm just using a standard bassoon vocal, the reed is probably a good like six inches higher than where it would normally be if we had the the correct vocal design that you were envisioning mm -hmm. for this instrument. So with the with the curved vocal, it's just much lower. Yeah. So. It's, it's going to, the whole instrument's going to need to sit much lower. Because up here, it's, it's going to be super top heavy. It's going to put so much weight on the, the left wrist uh, that it's just, it's not going to be playable except by, you know, giants. So the whole thing's going to need to go lower. Um, and I, I think we may want to experiment with a, uh, a couple of different upper wing joint designs. Um, it is entirely possible that we could do one that's completely straight with no bend. Um, that could get it to where we could essentially rest it on the ground and then just have the vocal come straight out and in. Um, so you mean like not have the uh, the the board double back on itself and just right. have the, hmm. that's that is a possibility. I imagine it would be a pretty long vocal, but no, yeah, you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't change, be you wouldn't change the vocal length at all because the the vocal length won't change because okay, the, I, I get you. right because because this is designed so that the highest vent is still within the instrument. And no further. And that's the vent mm -hmm. for the high uh, E flat, E, and F. So that's uh, that's one option. And the further down we get it, the more it's going to rest on the the right leg as opposed to on the left hand. And you want it much more on the leg than on the hand. Uh, that presupposes that we hold it off to the right side instead of in the center. Um, which I think for most bassoon players will be much more natural to hold it off to the right side. Yeah, just playing around with the, uh, the prototype, I, I find I'm resting it on my uh, my right leg all the time. And actually, one thing I was thinking of, uh, maybe having like a um, sort of like a big like like hoop right here that you like uh, you put around your leg so that the instrument sits on that, and as opposed to something like a seat strap or a floor peg, might be kind of comfortable. It's something I might experiment a little bit more with. That well, it depends on kind of where it's going to go, and that's one of those that would vary from person to person. Um, I, I personally like the idea of uh, just a small peg on it. And if we get it down low enough, we would be in the territory of something like a low C bass clarinet peg. Yeah, and I, think and I was thinking if we do have a peg, oh, sorry, uh, I was thinking if we do have a peg, uh, maybe have it, it would probably be beneficial to go off kind of at an angle so that you can play the the instrument at an angle, but the uh, the peg is still closer to the uh, underneath the center of gravity. Right. Yeah. Beneficial. I think I think the best solution is a, a peg coming off of this side here, and mm. I don't I don't think having it come straight off is going to be much of an issue really because it's going to be so low to the ground that. And you want some flexibility of movement, so I don't. I don't think we need to worry about it going straight down, perpendicular to the ground. Okay. But some players who have put pegs on their instruments uh, have it go just uh, parallel with the the instrument itself. <laughs> How common is that to have a, a peg in the same? I don't think I've ever seen that. Not very. Uh, the 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 famous bassoonist William Waterhouse was really the first person to do that. And he installed a peg on his instrument and a straight vocal. So he was kind of an early proponent of that. Um, his book, uh, 
bassoon in, in the Yehudi Menuhin series really details how uh, he came to that solution. So, uh, yeah, that, so that's, I don't, I don't think, um, you know, installing PEG will be too terribly difficult. But, uh, but yeah, there, so, so with my, my instrument now, um, this, we're still, you know, prototype, um, I am missing the bell. To give you an idea of how big the bell is going to be, it's going to be in two pieces. The top bell is actually going to be the same size as the boot joint. So here, but there's going to be another joint in between. So it'll be like a gentleman's cut. And so the whole instrument will sit at about like this angle here. And so it's, it's going to be much, much beefier because uh, the bell is going to extend up a, probably another two and a half feet from here. No, eas easily two and a half, maybe three feet. Because this right here is about 750 millimeters. And that's... That's a little over two and a half feet. So we're, that, we're going to add that and maybe another three and a half feet tall. So, yeah. It's, yeah, it's it, going to be really interesting seeing this thing all assembled. Although, yeah. fortunately, since we designed it in multiple pieces, it should, I'm hoping the case won't be much bigger than like a, a low C based cornet case or tenor sax case. No, here's the thing. With, with how I've designed it, it, this is as big as the case is going to be as wide. So this is the, the longest piece. And in fact, this piece is 40 millimeters too long because I sent you the stupid wrong measurements. So it's going to be, uh, what, uh, I measured from the wrong end of the tenon. So it's going to cut off a tenon entirely. So it's here. So, but uh, yeah. So the whole thing will fit in a case. In fact, it'll be smaller than my bassoon case. <clears throat> So it, it'll be absolutely fantastic how that, that works out. So this is the, the tallest piece here, the boot, and like this. And then you can see how really compact this is going to be. So, but uh, yeah. All right, are there any questions in, in the chat room right now about um, the the beast that we have wrought so far. Um, granted, you know, my, everything. Have you seen anything since uh, Jared number two? I have not. Okay. All right. So, um, uh, yeah. Um, let's see, what else can, can we say about it? So, uh, uh, we know that we're going to have to do some redesign of the wing. Um, we've got to do some redesign of the base joint. Uh, but other, the base joint is actually probably closest to finished, other than the fact that I just made it 40 millimeters too long. And then the the boot joint, uh, do you, on your boot joint, do you still have that, that huge ledge on yours? Uh, which ledge? I actually kind of redesigned my boot joint. I was trying to make a... Um... It's, actually, it's just held the other tape right now, okay. but I made it so that it has two open tunnels as well, which I don't think was a very good idea. It's pretty uncomfortable. Yeah. So uh, my, my boot joint's completely different. Okay, but the, the, the ledge I'm talking about where the, the wing joint meets the boot. Where the wing, yeah, yeah, I still have that. Okay, yeah. So um, that's one thing. It may be possible to get rid of that, but I gotta, I gotta see if I can mess around and, uh, in uh, Fusion and see if I can get rid of that. Yeah, uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's one thing. And I know that, I think the tone hole for the the, the low F tone hole the, for the pancake key is actually undersized. And I probably just sent you the wrong dimensions there because it's considerably smaller than the, the E tone hole for the D key. And so I, I'll have to double check the measurements on that uh, when we do uh, an update on that. Uh, surprisingly, though, I think that's, that's the only change we need to make on the boot joint, which is good news, yeah. because that is, the boot joint is by far the longest joint to print. Um, I think it took uh, 
44 hours to print on my end. I don't know how long it took on yours. Yeah, I did it at a, um, a point uh, one six millimeter layer height. So mine only took, well each, so it's divided in three sections and each section took about maybe 10 hours to print. So actually not bad at all. So yeah, and I did it on much finer resolution. I, I did it on 0.12. So, and then you probably did a um, lower infill than I did. Yeah, I did like 10%. Okay, and I did 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've always found that um, from what I've heard, the infill really doesn't add too much to the strength. And I, I, what I tend to do is I tend to go to less infill and more outer walls when I want strength. Mm. Now, I may, I may look at that approach in, in the future. Um, it, you know, uh, I, I was talking with uh, Matt Banks earlier today and talking about what the final version will be uh, printed in. Do we want to do it in an ABS or in that, um, that wood fill? And part of me yeah. really wants to do the wood uh, fill. So I actually ordered a... Uh... Yes, sir. I, uh, I, um, I actually ordered a, uh, a few rolls of the... Uh... Like the, the maple colored uh, wood filaments, I'm gonna try and print, try and see how it comes out because I've been really impressed with how my uh, my clarinet bells and barrels have been coming out. Yeah, those have been absolutely gorgeous, and I kind of want them. So, <laughs> um, maybe maybe we'll talk about something like that. Uh, but um, yeah, so I, I'm I'm thinking maybe try the the maple. Uh, for the final one, and actually have the uh, the great bassoon in, well, thirty percent maple probably is what it is. Um, and I, I'm thinking just for the the prototype, you know, for like the ivory ring at the top, there's an ivory uh, colored um, infill uh, plastic we can print on. Oh yeah, that's, uh, I was even thinking uh, they make this. Uh, I think it's called like silk silver filament. It like it's like this really high gloss uh, metallic filament. I was thinking maybe just it wouldn't really add any strength, but just having some kind of like decorative uh, caps like around like the end of the the, the boot joint, maybe do the the U bends and that. Yeah, that we, we we could definitely do that um, if we want to kind of design like um, say like. Uh, no, no, that's not a, a good place for it. But like at the top of the boot joint to have like a little slip to put uh, a cap on. That's something we could experiment with. Though that said, you know, we could eat, I could easily do that in metal too. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, I have to do that for my Baroque bassoon. It's missing the, the bands. But uh, yeah. So uh, as of right now, the, the great bassoon... You know, we've got we've got to do some ergonomic work. Um, I got got to figure out the uh, what to do really with the the upper wing to get the whole instrument to sit lower. So that, that'll be take some doing. And I, I wonder if we put the bend up higher, and so that it comes lower so it's not not even on this but and it it may be that we don't put a joint in it anymore uh like having one solid piece right yeah that could definitely be a possibility i kind of like just having the joint there just because it's a nice like a, a nice flat surface just because those are easy to print right um but yeah, we, we can. There's a lot of things we can try to make it work. But what what I'm thinking is that the the end end up having the upper boot, the upper wing, be about this big here. Uh, so maybe four inches total. It, it, that, okay, it's a really really short. Right. And if that's the case, it could be possible to model just a a, a circle a circular bend. Yeah. That Actually, yeah, because that, that, that's one of the one of the initial designs I was kind of thinking of, just having a uh, a bend that goes up and just makes a large uh, loop and then comes back down like uh, some of the old uh, uh, romantic contrabassoons. Actually, that would be a great that would be a great use for that metallic filament. 
Yeah. Oh, my beautiful. Um, I, I think that would uh, actually probably be the best solution. The way I foresee it is we can experiment with three different styles of that. We can have one that's uh, like this, one that's completely straight, no bend at all, and then one that has the S in it. Yeah. I think that's the great thing about this design, too, is that uh, we don't have to theoretically, I mean, we're going to probably change, make a few changes down here, but we don't have to uh, make all the changes at once. We can just make a new uh, upper wing joint and just put it on our existing instruments and right. test it out. So it's a lot less filament use. So, yeah, that's definitely something we'll probably be trying out in the future. Right. Um, and, and maybe we'll do a, a design session on that soon within like the next week or so. Um, yeah, that sounds good. I mean, how, how hard would it be to model that uh, the S joint? Uh, initially, I thought it'd be pretty hard, but now that I've been messing around more in Fusion 360, I think I could actually do it fairly easily. Okay. I mean, I, I could see you just taking the existing dimensions and just kind of tweaking it from there because, I mean, all you have to worry about is this the opening it uh, and the taper, but those are already preset into your your parameters. Yeah. So Ryan asks, will will I write for Great Bassoon and future compositions for Wind Band? Uh, yes, I plan on it. Um, honestly, I have not really been able to write anything this year. I've started my alto clarinet sonata. Um, but because I have been an essential employee at work, um, I have not really had the time or motivation to be writing anything. Uh, th though th my, all my composition efforts have been in um, getting uh, Symphony 2 played. And it's Symphony 2 is slowly, slowly coming together. So... But. Jared here is helping out. He's playing basset horn parts on it. Yeah, I gotta get practicing those parts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, once, once you get those, I'll have most of the low clarinet parts all filled in. Oh, no. Uh, the Euphonium Sonata was last year. So I think I did that back in September. Uh, it was supposed to be played this year, uh, but all the performances got canceled. I've had one, two, three, four, five performances get, of my music get canceled so far this year. Um, we'll see if uh, any others get canceled. What reads will it use? Uh, that's a good question. The answer is it's we're probably going to use slightly oversized bassoon reads. So the... It, they'll need to be specially made for it, and I've talked to someone who wants to do the redesign for it. So, uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, so that, that's what we've got. And so it's it's not that much big um, bigger right now than a regular bassoon, uh, but this is only uh, C-sharp right here for the tone hole. So we don't get C, which would be about here, and then it's got to go all the way to A. So it's uh, actually, it, so the the bass joint doesn't even have the, the low B natural key or the low C tone hole on it like most bassoons do. So it's it shrunk down. But anyway, do we have any other questions? Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Jared. What do you what do you think we should go to next? Um, so I think well, the next thing we initially had planned was probably the uh, the bell. But I'm thinking uh, now that we know we might need to change quite a few things. I think we should go back right. and start again with the uh, the upper wing joint again. I I think um, that's probably I can... yeah. And I, I want to re-examine re the measurements on the lower wing joint as well because they don't exactly match the, the measurements on the paper. So I, I'm wondering <laughs> if I, I sent the wrong measurements or if I did something wrong. Um, so plus my, uh, my lower wing joint's bent and I don't know how that happened. <laughs> so Yeah, I, I, I don't know if you've noticed this, but... Uh... On my prints, when they get really, really tall, they have like a, 
I can't, I probably can't show it on camera, but they have kind of like a wavy effect. Like you can mm -hmm. see like, like waves in the print. Is that something you noticed on your, your taller prints? Not particularly. I mean, they, they've got the rings on them, uh, but I, I've not had uh, them get uh, wavy. So hmm. Ryan asks, uh, won't it be useless when place, uh, place the contrabassoon because of the harmonic series? No. I mean, most of the time, the, the great bassoon and the um, 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 the contrabassoon will probably be playing in octaves, freeing up uh, the upper bassoons to play more of their tenor role, play more melodic stuff. So this is really just um, designed to play uh, in octaves with the contrabassoon. Or you know, it's it's, it's the same same uh, relationship that the contra alto clarinet and the contra bass clarinet have. So yeah, I can even see it playing quite a few more uh, melodic passages too, because it does. Um, well, given that it, uh, I guess so it's, 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 theoretically, since the board is as a smaller taper uh, than the bassoon, that should facilitate playing in the uh, the upper register a little bit better. Yeah, so it, it's going to be, um, well, another way, you know, that's, it's like the, the actually the closest instrument may be like bass saxophone. So bass saxophone to the baritone sax. You know, yeah, that's a good example. For the great bassoon to, to, to regular bassoon. But uh, yeah, so uh, that's where it stands right now. Um, it's going to. We're going to go back to the drawing boards on some stuff. Um, maybe we can do that tonight after we're through. What is the Great yeah, Bassoon? Yeah, sure okay. So, yeah, um, there's, there, there's a question. So the Great Bassoon, um, great bass is the old term for an instrument lower than bass but higher than contrabass. So this is a bassoon pitched one-fourth lower than the regular bassoon. So it's uh, in the key of G. So if I play a C on here, it will sound G, a fourth lower. Open F is now a C. Uh, off topic, could you 3D print a Dulcian or a racket? Quinn Lewis is working on the rackets right now. Uh, he has got those nearly perfected. Like, they're absolute works of art, what he has done. Um, and... I am totally jealous of them. Um, I, I know uh, that you are too, Jared. Oh yeah, they're absolutely beautiful. I mean, I, I do want to design and print my own, but I don't want to like steal a thunder. So I did find a design for a, a Baroque uh, two-key clarinet my girlfriend's been wanting. So I'm going to print one of those, see how it comes out. Yeah. Uh, as far as- Use the same uh, wood filament. Yeah. As far as printing a Dulcian would go, it would be, uh, honestly, no more difficult than printing a, just a giant boot joint because that's all a Dulcian is. Um, so something like this, uh, it would just take forever because uh, this it, this joint here just took forever to print. All right, how I don't know if you saw the. Oh. I don't know if you saw the link I sent you, but actually, uh, it looks like somebody did print a uh, a soprano Dulcian. And they even made a, a key for it that was 3D printed. It's pretty impressive. I'll have to go back and look at that because I, I I didn't go that detailed into it. But uh, yeah, I'll definitely look. So how will the higher note harmonics be achieved? Half hole vents, etc. So uh, this version, um, there, it's with the first finger uh, open. It's going to have the full range of half hole available, and then I, it's designed to have three harmonic vents. It's um, so the the lower one will control uh, written A B flat B. The next one will be C C sharp D, and then the third one is um, uh, E flat E and F. So simple as that. Uh, later versions I want to make fully automated, so it's one key that will do everything. So uh, that's that's the uh, the goal, but we'll see how that goes.
I've actually found that I can use um, using half one. I can kind of get up to uh, I guess it would be a high, be a high D. High D, yeah. Oh, I can't do it now. <laughs> I could do it this morning, I promise. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it does seem to really like playing up register, which is a good sign. I think once we get some vents on there, it should be a really great instrument to play yeah. in upper registers. It could, it could have just a beautiful singing uh, voice up in that the upper register. So we'll see. But, you know, it is designed to really ha have much more of that uh, low, low, gruff voice. So we'll see. Um, I, I'm going to be interested. Um, one thing I'll definitely want to have a hand rest on it. So we'll get a hand rest bracket, put it right here. Uh, definitely will not need a hand rest bracket for left hand. Um, but uh, a hand rest because so much of the hand is going to be off of here instead of gripping it like this. But yeah, so yeah, lots of lots of design issues uh, that it's so much better now to have the whole thing in hand uh, that we can kind of go forward from there. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, just feeling it in my hands can kind of tell me what needs to be changed and what uh, what works. So it's a great thing about making prototypes. Yeah, exactly. And I figure we're, before we even get to making keys on it, we'll probably do another one or two prints of everything. Oh yeah, definitely. But I think I think we need to go back and look at um, the upper upper wing and the lower wing next, and just kind of re start retweaking those. So, all right, do we have any more questions? Ryan asks, "How are you doing?" Uh, I've been, I've been fine. I've been a, an essential employee, so I've been going into work nearly every day, um, and. It has not affected where I am really at all. Um, I, I'm in such a rural area that it's it like there's been a handful of cases within my county, but that's it. So I, I don't know. I'm sure it's probably worse where you are, Jared. Oh, yeah, it's crazy here. Um... Yeah, fortunately, I work in the uh, the aerospace industry, so and yeah, not looking too good, but I'll make it through. Yeah, uh, but you can do a lot of your work from home. Oh yeah, that's that's the that's the one nice thing about my job. But most of it I'm doing remote, so yeah. Fortunately, I've been okay for the last few weeks. And and you've been able to do a lot of uh, instrument design in that time. Oh yeah, at times I've just been kind of bored out of my mind, so I. And kind of designing every project I've had in the back of my head for the last few years. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I I want to I want to talk to you about some other designs. I was uh, talking uh, with uh, Matt Banks earlier today about doing some uh, contra alto clarinet extensions, and I think we can probably look at doing that. Yeah, that'd definitely be fun. I got I got to find another cheap Bundy. Yeah. yeah, that's one other project I'm going to do. Uh, it, and I'm, I'm thinking that, um, you know, because he's got that the buffet, and so you'd have to do one uh, a design for the Bundy and Selmer, because those should actually be about the same, and then one for the buffet. But I think I know... Yeah, unfortunately... Yeah, I think it would be... Um... In terms of uh, just design work, it'd be incredibly simple just to make a, well, a straight extension would be pretty simple, mm -hmm. uh, although it might be more beneficial to have a curved extension. It'd be a little bit more complicated, but probably still doable. Yeah. Uh, actually, I know how to do it and minimize the key work, and so I'll talk to you about that off, off uh, chat. So, anyway, if we don't have any more questions, I think that's about it for tonight. We've been going about 40 minutes. So, yeah, that's what the Great Bassoon is. And um, it may be a month or so before we do another update on it because it'll take a while. Uh, but, uh, yeah, the, the next thing we're working on, of course, is uh, Symphony 2, which is coming along very well. 
Uh, oh, Brian has a question. Seeing as this instrument is in G, are you going to advocate for the G tenor runes reappearance? I'm starting to think that way, yeah. Even though everything I've ever written is for F tenor rune, uh, G is starting to make more and more sense to me, honestly. So, uh, yeah, but in fact, I've got to go borrow or rent a tenor rune here the next week or so, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, all right. Uh, anything else you want to add, Jared? Uh, not that I can think of. I think we okay. covered pretty much everything on our progress, and you know, let's keep working on it. Yeah, we will do that. All right. Uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Right, thanks, guys.